This is the last section, part three, what works best for the $1 billion market with 300 OTC topical oral natural and FDA prescription treatments for fungal nails. Many of the previous OTC products formulations that you have viewed have probably benefited someone. I've not had experience with some of the formulations and leave it up to the consumer to see what results they obtain. Again, usually treating with some product is better than not treating. Here is a review of the following 300 OTC products I have dispensed, prescribed, or from my patients have tried separately or combinations that have helped as a cure or regular maintenance treatment. You can read them below. Clean Republic, which is hypochlorous acid, has got a lot of uses we use daily in our office. Personally, I've seen some improvement, even similar to Vicks or other OTC products. It's safe and excellent EPA disinfectant for athlete's foot and shoes and can be used as an antiseptic to open skin wounds or irritated skin, and it does not sting or discolor fabric. It's an excellent product for all around use and even for kids' boo-boos. This has probably been marketed longer than anything else. Vicks Vapor Rub, I've even had some of my patients who didn't want to spend money on this, who had this around the house, used it. Uh, several of the professional magazines said that there was at least a 25% improvement in, in appearance, but I don't know of anyone who's actually cured it with nil Vicks Vapor Rub. These are direct FDA approved prescription only topical treatments that I've had experience with. They all have worked for somebody. Some of them are very expensive, some of them are not. Penlac or Cyclopriox was the first FDA approved prescription topical available in the US. These are some of the newest FDA approved products and when I say newest, been out in the last seven years. Jubilia and Keratin, both are very expensive, but now they're starting to offer them a little bit more discounted with private insurance. Uh, they both have worked well, and they're better than most of the OTC topicals that I've used. Genador is the first to get FDA approval for splitting nails, dystrophic nails, brittle nails, and that actually says improve appearance. Soon after Genador got its approval, Dexter the dystrophic nail also came out on the scene promoting the following product. Nuval was also giving FDA prescription for brittle dystrophic nails. Without doubt, the FDA approved oral medications have the absolute highest rates of cures for nail fungus. That includes terbidafine, iatroconazole, and diflucan. Here's Digger the Dermatophyte, made popular by the Lamisil product. As I mentioned, oral has the best cure rates of all the antifungal products or treatments. I have had decades of experience of prescribing them and generally have low risk for liver complications. If you don't have a history of hepatitis, cirrhosis, fatty liver, generic high liver, high level liver enzymes or medication co-risk, most have less than a 1% complication risk including Lamisil, now sold as terbidafine. It's got about a 62% cure rate. Sporinox, archerconazole, similar depending on fungus type. A few more risk factors. Uh, Griziofulvin has been out for a long, long time, has lower cure rates, under 30%, and you may have to take it longer with more risk. Diflucan is the one I reach for first. It has about a 50% cure rate in my practice. I write more of this than any of the others, but I do write it off-label because it is not FDA approved for nail fungus, but it does work. It's a once a week therapy instead of every day like Lamisil, and it's well tolerated. Uh, many medical prescribers write this like candy for vaginal yeast infections when they're taking antibiotic therapy. FDA approved lasers that treat fungal nails when they first came out, they were advertising 90% cure rates, but that was not clinical cure, that was mycological cure, which means if it was cured in the Petri dish. I see about only 20% improvement rates versus topicals of around 5%. However, when you use this in combination with oral and or topical, the lasers do a good job. Most patients come to me after years or decades of damage with destroyed nail beds. The earlier you start any treatment, the better. Even if you tried the topical and they don't work, it's good to know that it's part of the medical history what was tried. 
Out of the 300 topical antifungal products you've just taken a look at, these are the common ingredients and categories. So if you want to create your own, here's your master list. Important. Nail fungus is no joke like some people think. Number one, diabetics and anyone with vascular disease or neuropathy are three times more likely to have infections leading to digital and lower extremity amputations with nail fungus. Number two, salons are not the place to go if you have nail fungus. Servicing anyone with nail fungus in a salon is out of their scope of practice without written permission from a physician. Remember, if they are willing to treat someone with nail fungus, they are willing to infect you. Ask nail techs if they have advanced training. Number three, anyone treating nail fungus should have heat sterilized autoclaved or disposable instruments. And that means physicians who provide fungal nail debridement services as well, especially in nursing homes. Any ethical nail tech or medical professional will be happy to show you how they provide sterilized care to protect their clients or patients. Be proactive, get treated right away. Don't let these nails ever lead to this. Get a PCR test, which is a type of DNA test, a PAS and a GMS histology exam, and a DTM nail culture from your local podiatrist or dermatologist to get a proper confirmatory diagnosis. I do all of these tests to diagnose as none of them are foolproof, no matter what expert says that only one test is necessary. Every one of these tests also can be negative when other ones are positive due to the inability to get one sample divided equally to represent the best submission. The best, most accurate advice I can give after nearly 25 years of practice is that any one of these OTC products is better than not treating the nail fungus problem, even with something like Vicks Vapor Rub. Many of these products temporarily bleach the nail, soften the nail for trimming, or simply improve appearance, but many of these topical products will not cure nail fungus unless you start treatment immediately and early upon discovery. Only FDA approved topical and prescription oral products or treatments in combination with FDA approved laser therapy give the best documented results. Only multi-therapy combinations of these FDA modalities and medical office dispense topical meds have the highest rate of cure in my experience. But first you should get a nail biopsy to diagnose it correctly, as many problems mimic nail fungus and these could be a waste of your time and money. Most of the OTC treatments are less than 5% effective. Even the FDA treatments are not 100% effective. At best, the FDA therapies in combination with laser and topical are only 70% effective. This would exclude ongoing yearly or periodic monitoring and prophylactic use of an FDA topical or laser to prevent reoccurrence in many patients over a lifetime. This is some important quick advice. Try one of the 300 topicals for no more than three to six months if there's no open lesions or broken skin or history of melanoma. If you don't see a major improvement in three to six months, go see a podiatrist or dermatologist if you have one locally or a medical professional if no specialist are in your area. If you've had nail fungus, melanoma, or nail infections in the past, or you're a high risk patient, Go straight to the medical expert. Remember, 5% of all cancers are found in the feet. Disclaimer, many listed antifungal creams were marketed or sold as nail treatment in the search engine categories. Nearly 275 nail fungus or related treatments are listed, but others are periodically being added and some may be missing or rebranded. Not all labels are readable or spelled correctly. A few labels are repeated with different graphics. All labels are copyrighted per each company. The intent of this presentation is to show the enormous international product variety and extreme marketing of OTC topicals and nail treatments, but not to comment on the effectiveness of any particular brand unless I've had a direct experience with the product's use or marketing. Education is the best prevention. Salons are responsible for over 1 million new nail infection cases each year. Read that section in Death by Pedicure. Look for Medinail.com Advanced Educated Nail Techs trained to steam heat autoclave their instruments 
and then market that ability. www.medinail.com offers free video programs in disinfection and melanoma for the general public as well. You can see the free courses and need to register to view, but this is the link. A proper history of the nail problem is the best single pre best predictor of nail fungus short of a nail biopsy PCR culture. Remember, nail salons are all beauty, fun, and games until someone loses a toe. State cosmetology boards are chartered to supposedly protect the public. However, historically, most have a poor track record of meaningful enforcement. State cosmetology boards are actually underfunded, understaffed, and overly political. They do not promote or in many states resist advanced nail training. They do not mandate autoclave sterilization to put to protect the public. Even after COVID-19, most states do not mandate gloves to be required to protect the nail techs or the public, only enforce weak disinfection practices like the blue liquid you see. And you can see a free course to understand and you can have to register to view it, but the link is below. And local public health departments need to step in like Boston to mandate autoclave sterilization, but this takes public support. Nail salons can contribute many new nail fungal infection cases each year due to four main reasons. Number one, working outside the nail tech scope of practice by accepting clients with obvious signs of nail fungus by diagnosing and servicing clients who do not want to see a doctor or have no health insurance and they just want a nail tech to treat them. Number two, causing infections to clients with contaminated instruments via poor disinfection protocols and inadequate disinfection agents like these blue quats that you see in salons, which do not properly disinfect these instruments. Number three, poor education as to what constitutes normal nails. And try to find a nail tech who's using an autoclave to prevent these types of infections with proper sterilization. Be encouraged, number four, by clients to treat their fungal nails thick nails or ingrown nails without physician referral and by dispensing or marketing nail fungus treatment products out of their scope of practice. If you want to know more about nail or foot melanoma, go to medinail.com and see a free lecture called More Eyes on Melanoma by one of the premier surgical experts in the country, Dr. Brian Markinson from Mount Sinai Hospital. I'm Dr. Spaulding. I provided this free information sheet on antifungals. You can reach me at my email at drrspalding at gmail.com or you can go and see more free training modules on the medinail.com website.